Monday morning, Marketing Smarties, featuring Sue Ferreira today. We're going to have some fun. We've already been having fun for almost an hour, but now we're going to include you too. So let me share this with you now. Thank you. Oh, how about that? I'm going to fix this live because <laughs> I just cannot have this. <laughs> yeah, that looks a little better. So that's what it was supposed to say. So we'll uh, we'll wrap it up with that. Hi, everybody. Roll, this is Roland from MinMax Media presenting to you the Monday Morning Marketing Smarties. And we've been having fun today, so that's why I'm kind of loosely structured here and not doing as well as I could. But greetings, everybody. I hope you're watching live. But if you're not, this is wonderful in the replay. And just to remind you, the comments are live before, during, and after the event. So even if you come back and watch this event a week from now and want to ask Sue a question or Lowell Ann or myself, you can, and we will respond to you in the comment stream. So it's an ongoing conversation that's live and, and uh, forever. So anyway, this is Roland from MinMax Media. As I was saying, we bring you the minimum you need for the maximum impact. And that stands as a premise behind everything that we teach in this show and everything that we present to you. And today, we are in an investigative research study to find out more about Sue Ferreira. And one of us has some speakers on. Is it Sue or? Yeah, there's suddenly an echo, isn't it? I don't know. Let me see whether it's. And we probably should have addressed that di I didn't see any uh, earbuds or headphones on you. So you probably have a pair of speakers on that you're listening to the event for. Yep, mm -hmm. I do. But I haven't had this issue before. I've got a default built-in output going. Um, then, then I think the, uh, the other possibility is you may be monitoring the event live. And, of course, that will... No, actually, no, I'm not. I have not often do, but I'm not this morning. Anyway, let's see. It looks okay at the moment. Try it again, Roland. Okay. Well, we'll see whether or not we've uh, discovered a new way to, to get echoes out of Hangouts or not. But in the meantime, we're going to carry on with this show. Joining me today is Lowell Ann Fulsang, as she has agreed to be our comment manager. And for a moment, let's take a moment and find out who Lowell Ann is, because this is important. Thank you. <laughs> it's important, is it? <laughs> well, yeah, it is because we sit in on each other's shows, but we don't always know the extent of what the value of the individual is. So listen up, people. <laughs> okay. My name is Loma Land, and uh, I do uh, career and business coaching and consulting, for, especially for solopreneurs. And um, I think I've been doing my... Tuesday morning, being your own CEO success circle now for, I don't know, four years or so. Would you say that's right, Sue? You and I used to get yeah, we started a long time ago. about four years ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, 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 you know, you've, you've just kept it going and that is a fantastic achievement. Yeah. Yes. I'm, 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 well, it's because it's fun. <laughs> so I'm happy to be here. And I just want to, uh, while I've got the floor, um, we have some guests uh, on the site already. Barbara Quick is there. John 
Dr. Cusick. I hope, John, I murdered your name, I'm sure. <laughs> but if you want to put in uh, something phonetical there, <laughs> help me out. I think I can help out with that. This is, uh, that must be John Jerkowitz. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> it's John. But I hope I got it right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, Kathy Pope is has joined it as, as well. So uh, welcome here, everybody. Yeah, it looks I'll like Barbara. Sort of monitoring the comments, and I shall share. Uh, and Roland, when I see something that I think you would want to share, I'll just do a screen share. Great, because uh, that is... Uh, basically Lowland's very important job here. And that is that I'm going to get so caught up in the conversation that I don't always pay attention to the comments coming to the, from the audience, but those are very important to me. That's why I have Lowland here. And that's very important to the overall conversation and we'll have some fun as we go. So without further ado, let's in introduce our main guest today. And that is Sue Ferreira. Sue, I've been looking forward to this for a long time. You're finally here. And please give the audience a little bit of information about yourself. Okay. My, my name, as Roland has said so perfectly, because not everybody gets the Ferreira right. My name is Sue Ferreira. Yeah. And um, I am now just hit 71. So I'm in that older age group. And I help mainly women i i'm no no objection to helping men too but it's mainly women who need this help i help women take all of the wisdom that they've got up here in their head get it out of themselves brain dump it organize it and then take it to the world via the web um and specifically using video and all the cutting edge tools um because the world needs the world needs all of this wisdom uh heavens above we need the wisdom and especially as women maybe get a little older, they grew up before the web and they're maybe not so web savvy. So uh, like Lowell Ann, I, I let older women know that they can do this too. And, uh, and I love every minute of it. Thank you. And from my perspective, you are an inspiration, not only to older women. If young women see both of you performing and doing what you do and accomplishing the things you do they can say crap i could do that and step into it early and not wait until some age issue as they're traversing uh, their life but start doing things like this now yep so i think that the the concept of what we deliver here on this show traverses all age groups and the thing is it is going to be so helpful to the baby boomers and the people, the elderly that think they think they're elderly or they think that they're reclusive and don't know how to connect with the world. It's like at our fingertips right now. And that's why you're here today, Sue, for the most part is the basic message that you bring. But if, before you get into that, I wanted to start off by uh, saying how I met you. And this is, the responsibility solely of, of Rosemary Barnes, who was our guest a couple weeks ago. And she brings up a very, very important factor in all of this. And the, the, the basic concept is confidence. And the more acute concept is confident reinvention. And when we look at the subject of confident reinvention, you're the, the epitome of that. And the reason that I say that is I've heard parts of your story. I have an idea of what you went through, and I think the world needs to hear it now. So could you go back and tell us what you were before as a surgeon and in, in, in the medical industry, how long and how you, how long you were into that? And let's start with that, your, your history in the medical industry, please. Well, I, yeah, and I'm before I go into my story, I'm absolutely – going to confirm that Roland is is so right that this is something for any age it's just that I kind of get in because of my age I I maybe gather people who are who are older but in fact I have some really young folks uh, working with me too yeah I mean my story um 
actually, I was an anesthesiologist. I spent a long time in the OR, 40, almost 45 years um, as an anesthesiologist. So it's kind of scary when you think about it. I went to medical school in 1965. So that is like 53 years ago now. And that's half a century. And it's been the most amazing half century plus three years to be alive. Um, it has been a blast. And I think we have lived in an, in, in an age that has been very few will have lived in such a remarkable age as we do. I'm sure if you're in the 1700s in the Enlightenment, they'd probably say we lived in a wonderful age too. But it's been a remarkable 50, 60, 70 years. And I also, if I hadn't done medicine, I'd have been a historian. So I've always taught history of medicine. I've always seen things on like a, a timeline, if you want, of, of things happening. And, and there's been amazing changes over this, this last 50, 70 years. So how on earth did I go from being an anesthesiologist to doing video marketing and helping you take your wisdom online? Well, actually, you may think I'm crazy, but there is a connection. And the connection is to do with this time that I spent as a physician because I saw our longevity increase to the point that my jaw would drop um, realizing the changes. When I went to medical school, the life expectancy for a man was 64 and for a woman it was 72. Now we're in the high 80s and yet every day in the OR, I only quit two years ago, not quite two years ago from working in the OR and now we will see women, uh, sadly men have kind of gone at this stage, uh, which is one of the reasons that I focus more on women. It, you know, we see regularly women 96, 97 coming into the OR for knee replacements, hip replacements. They're all living independently. They're smart as tax and they're going concerns. And I know this is going to increase. So as we were talking about before we started, I can see us living easily. Certainly the younger ones on this call or listening to this to 120, 130. And we're frankly not prepared for that. So I also knew that we have this incredible time right now where we, we've got all this online opportunity. We have this time where we can take our wisdom, take our knowledge to the world and use that to generate income uh, for, the second, uh, for our second act, if you want, our second 60 years, if you want. And so that's, that's the connection between my years in medicine and what I'm doing now. Uh, it's just that I, I know many will need to do something generate income. I mean, if you live to 120 and you, you quit at 60, what the heck are you going to do for 60 years? You're going to twiddle your thumbs. <laughs> Lowell Ann and I are in agreement on this, right? You're not going to twiddle your thumbs for 60 years. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff we can do on this planet and we've got the wisdom. So anyway, that's the whole message. So, I mean, going back to, uh, just going back to my, my medical history, I went to medical school, I qualified, um, and, uh, I, I went into anesthesia. I'll be honest, I always wanted to be a pediatrician, uh, but I went into anesthesia because I was married to someone who was going to do pediatrics, and I knew that having two people in pediatrics would make it different, difficult. So I actually ended up as a pediatric anesthesiologist at the, mainly at the University of Alberta in uh, Edmonton at the Stollery Children's Hospital for a long time. But I did adults too, which is um, you know where I got to see how old people were getting in such incredibly good condition. And then when I was 60, I went through one of those gray divorces. It was unexpected and it was a big shock. And it was a, you know, I'll, I'll say it, it was a shitty couple of years, few years. And that was my turning point where I realized how many women were going, how many people are going through gray divorces, not just women. And suddenly their life changes at a time when you know, you don't actually want it to change because you thought you were going on a certain tack. And my divorce actually came through the year before the financial crash. So the financial crash, plus suddenly this awareness of being on my own and having a totally different future that I wasn't planning and, and realizing how many people were going to lose everything in that crash. That was actually, I get quite emotional thinking about it. That was a point where I thought, geez, I got to do something to help people find their way again. And I, and I knew, I knew what the, the web opportunity was there and I've watched it grow over, you know, 10 years or so now. I wasn't really in it to begin with, but I've seen that potential come. And so slowly over the last five years, I 
would drop a day in the OR and work a day on my business, new business, and then I dropped two days and then three days, and then slowly I, I finally quit medicine two years ago and went full time at this new world, which I absolutely love. That's a, an amazing story. So you consciously made this transition into web work from the uh, anesthesiologist position. And uh, I, what a brave thing. I don't know too many people that would have even tried that. You know, the security of one job that's decent, pays well, established, you have a history with, an experience, and it's something that's so uniquely different and cutting edge. And I don't know how to applaud you higher than that. Well, that's lovely of you. But you see, I mean, most there's a lot. This this whole question of reinvention um, and confident reinvention, which Rosemary talks about, it's here. We're going to do it. It's so many people are doing it. But if you come out of the corporate world, corporate world, say, and you reinvent into being a solopreneur, you can usually bring your skills with you. I'd be in a big problem, you know, if I went out and I said, okay. I'm going to teach everybody how to do anesthesia. I will do anesthesia 101 <laughs> and I will have a membership program. You know, I'd be in trouble. And, you know, people practicing it would be a problem too. So I, I knew if I was going to make this shift, I had to shift into something completely different. And, and I'll be honest, it, I mean, it's been bigger than I thought. It, you know, I knew nothing. I'd never been an entrepreneur. I'd never been in business. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, people think physicians have pensions. I don't have a pension. We were all fee for service. And so I guess in a way that was like running my own business. But I'd never really I'd never really been out um, as an entrepreneur. So it was huge mindset changes, massive learning curve. And now I'm through and I'm on my way. But it but it's I think if I would say to anyone, if you're thinking of doing it, do it. I, you grow you benefit, you, you learn so much. Uh, I, I think it's a wonderful process. Now, I'm going to speculate here because I understand that you came from this other world over here and then decided to shift into this one that you're doing now. You had to have certain abilities and skills and, uh, say, an aptitude for speaking and communicating and being comfortable on camera. So the question I would have for you is, how did you get started? You know, I've been a university lecturer forever. I've okay, always there you go. been a university lecturer, um, and a lot of, and that was a big issue. That was a big mindset change I had to have because a lot of my lectures for for staff and residents and medical students were quite didactic. And I, to switch to the, the, the very much, it's a different, it's a different way of speaking uh, when you're here as an entrepreneur, you know, it's, uh, you're much more building engagement. I, didn't, I mean, I, I didn't give a stuff whether I was engaged with the residents. I mean, they had to learn this stuff and that was it, right? So, uh, but I already, because I used to do a lot of history of medicine lectures and I used to make them funny, uh, I think, those lectures help me more than my didactic lectures. So I do have a background of public speaking, even if though it was in, in the academic world. So that was easier. Also, I've always been a, I call myself the old biddy techie dude. I have always <laughs> loved. <laughs> Love it. Um, and so I've always loved computers. I mean, I would get, I've always had my leg pulled. Uh, I think in 1984, when the web really started going, I saw the potential and I, I've been excited by it ever since. So I didn't, I already had a fairly good knowledge about computers and the web when I decided to make the shift. I wasn't starting from ground zero. Real good. So obviously you had some minor, well, actually they were major footholds and things that were going to expand you and propel you in forth that you could take with you. And I think one of the secrets that people will discover is that if they look at their own selves, they might think that they're unqualified to do this, but they have some things in their experience as a human being that will help them do this type of thing. So 
before I continue, I want to see what uh, Lowell Ann's bringing us. Well, um, we, um, uh, we've sort of gone beyond the conversation now, but John says, I'm 65 and I've been at this for five years. So we all got, we got into a competition about age. So I added, and I'm 77, so I've got you beat. And then Barbara Quick added, and I'm 20 years beyond you. <laughs> <laughs> and but isn't this fantastic that we're all here? I mean, it, it is. Yeah. And it is. I, and the other thing I would like to share is that our friend uh, Alana from Ireland has joined us as, as well. So welcome, Alana. Oh, hi, Alana. Thank you for joining us. She was uh, she had another appointment and was afraid that she may not be able to be here. I'm glad you made it because we're having a lot of fun here. So age being a set aside, I'll, I'll divulge my age too. I am 64 going on 65 this year. And uh no, I haven't been there for five years, John, but I I just realized it was like, you know, like the Beatles song, when I'm 64, well, I am 64, and I don't even know what to tell you what it feels like. I don't know. So maybe, you know, my bad, my good, we'll, we'll see. But anyway... Oh, 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 just a minute. We've got to add one more thing. Alana says, I'll jump in and say I'm 58 and wish I had become self-employed years ago. Oh, good, good point. <laughs> That's a, a wonderful statement. And uh, I think this is a little bit early, but we're going to take a moment right now <laughs> because uh, we, we're interviewing Sue Ferreira. And if anybody wants to actually be in touch with Sue, you can do so by copying the information that's coming up on the screen in just a moment. So check that out and see what you do. So it's great to have an, uh, an old bit, old bitty techie. <laughs> <laughs> She says she doesn't do that much on Google Plus, but there's that. And then her Facebook page. And of course, Wisdom to Wealth Mastery is probably the the tagline for everything that she does. So you do have the the, the, the tag, right? Yeah, yeah, I Hashtag. do. And so if you put in Wisdom to Wealth Mastery, it comes up in you know just about everything from Pinterest and Instagram to YouTube to the whole kitten poodle. Okay, good. So we're just taking a breath of fresh air right now, pausing in the midst of what we're doing. This is a very, very fun interview that we have with Sue Ferreira. Used to be in the medical industry for almost 45 years, and now she's moving herself into the live streaming world. And we're going to focus on this uh, second half on a couple of different things. Uh, when you finally, Sue, when you finally decided that you were going to do this, how did that, how did you get started? Well, what did you do first? Got a finger, go to the keyboard, start searching. And this was, you know, initially, I didn't know what I was searching for. So, uh, and, and also, you know, I don't think we realize how much the web has changed in five, 10 years. Because mm -hmm. when I started, I mean, they're really, it wasn't here. Um, if, you, if you think about it, and I think this is, this is key to a lot of people who haven't realized the revolution that's happened. Because 2005, 2006, 2007 was YouTube, Facebook, iPhone. So those three things came in only 10 years ago. I mean, it's extraordinary to think it was only 10 years ago. And they, and, and that was with, at the time when I wasn't even looking. So I was looking at the beginning of the explosion of these three coming together and <clears throat> blowing everything out of the water. And I came in probably about five years ago when I really realized the power of what was happening. I, I went to a meeting. I, I, I actually went to an event on real estate because I was interested in real estate investment too. And there was a guy there, Mike Koenigs, who is a video marketer in uh, down in San Diego. And Mike Koenigs. Yeah. Mike spoke and he talked about video and I was already 
aware of it and I thought I'm going to go to his his uh, event and I did and I started learning video from him and in that and and you know that's been the time when it's grown massively and I don't know if folks realize it's now video is now 82 percent of all web content it is massive massive so if you're not doing video you're really you're losing out on 80 percent of the traffic on on the web so you know that's really why it's become so important because we're visual creatures and we love talking to each other like this it's very very powerful i have a question of observation for you if 82 percent of the content online is video related who the hell is doing all this thing when i look at the the early adopters and the midway adopters the the mainstream adopters right now I don't see that many of them doing live streaming. I mean, I know more of them are, but that doesn't seem like enough to, to warrant 82% of the content online. I, th think? I think what you're saying is you mentioned live streaming and that's a small segment of video. And that I is. agree that that 82% is misleading. And most of that content is going or is being created in Facebook lives that you never see. And in YouTube, YouTube is, I love YouTube, okay, got to say, it's my fave. Um, the, the volume and the quantity of video put up on YouTube is unbelievable. Uh, it has become the second, it's the second largest search engine in the world, but there's a massive amount of video which people put on YouTube that sadly never sees the late light of day, but it's there counted as, I mean, it's taking up storage space right it's video that's created but it never sees the, the light of day because it's be just because there's so much going on on youtube and you do have to do certain things to get yourself seen uh, and if you don't do those you're never going to be seen go ahead loan uh roland i just wanted to uh, make sure that you're aware that mark barris has just joined us oh hi mark thanks for joining us uh, lovely to have you on the uh, listening end of this and your comments are welcome uh, i'm glad you may be able to catch our guest today that's great okay so when you started your education on uh on video production and so forth um it wasn't so much live video it wasn't live streaming but the video production was was high um, how long before you felt confident that you could produce your website and do this job and put a product out there that was worthy of being sought after by the people? I think that's an ongoing process. I, I mean, it really is. The, and I think, I don't know if it will slow down. The more you do, the more confident you get. But flat platforms change. And even like five or six years ago when I started, it was it was difficult to to do video and and technically it was way 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 more difficult than it is now and there wasn't facebook live no there was really hardly anyone doing live video it was nearly all recorded uh it was way more complex uh even iphones weren't doing what they can do now so i've kind of grown along with the tech and the interesting thing now is you know, women don't like doing tech, like don't like doing video, and that is one of the huge things that holds them back. And I can make that blanket statement because it's like ninety nine point nine 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 percent of women just hate doing video, which is which is a real challenge. But the the video tech has become so simple now that that has become a non issue as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you know, with the or the amazing old iPhone, you can or smartphone, it doesn't matter, Android too, you can do anything. And uh, so the tech has become simple. So really for me, now I focus much more on mindset and, and helping women realize they can tell their story, they can organize their story, they can make a meaningful story and they can record it on video and uh, or public speaking. Cause you know, there's that gradient of going from being a public speaker on stage to video is really not much difference. It's just a mindset difference. So I think it, it's difficult to pin it down because 
I kind of caught this at the beginning and I've grown along with the video. And I think one of the things I will say, if you're going to go into this world is you've got to be prepared to change because it's an ever changing platform. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> um, can I jump in again? And just yes. let you know that Vivek has uh, joined us from the UK. Wonderful. We wake has his own story and he's went, he's gone from, Britain to India and back to Britain, and he's uh, launching in his own brand new life in the Great Britain. And I'm glad you're able to make it today. We hope to interview We Wake in the next week or two. So that's uh, just a little additive. So when I, when I think of the questions that I want to ask you, there are quite a few. <laughs> but I I wanted to go back to the. Uh, the concept of your your website and you make the statement in there because i really love this idea craft their wisdom you teach people how to craft their wisdom so who do you believe and i have my own feelings of what the answer is who do you believe qualifies who has the potential to craft wisdom well i think anyone at any stage has wisdom you grow your wisdom as you grow older. But I just feel, and, and we were we were sort of talking about this earlier, that the older person was very marginalized by society over the years. You know, you, you retired and you were kind of done with, whereas we know that's changing. Retirement is probably almost going to disappear. And you have this huge population of people say at any age really but especially 45 years and old as you know we've been knocked about a bit by the world and about life by life and you grow this wisdom and i just know that there's this body of wisdom with with common themes going through it and i think if we can radiate out our wisdom individually and bring it together for the whole world i just think we we're a huge force for change um, unfortunately, GDPR, the new regulations that came in from Europe two days ago, three days ago, they're going to put a damper on it, but I won't rant about that. Um, but I think we have this potential to take every one of us has a story. That is such a valuable concept. And we all have a story that's worth telling. And if we can all tell our stories and then turn that into wisdom and guidance for mm. others, and we've all got different skills um, and different hobbies and and you know, I just think it's it's just the most magnificent platform for us to be able to to build communities, to tell our stories, and to help people who may be wanting to go in the same direction. I thought of a website. This is a decade and a half ago, and I wanted to make it about especially seniors because, of course, I was approaching the age myself, and I thought to myself, all these baby boomers have so much experience. Mm. And I thought of the things that I devised during my lifetime when I was bringing up kids and how to make a swing, swinging gate for the, to, to block off the, you know, the uh, stairways to keep them from falling downstairs and different gadgets that I thought there've got to be millions of gadgets that people have thought of that are just there. That's their own widget that nobody knows about. And I thought of let's formulate a, a website that we can bring out and let people tell all about their widget. And maybe some of these things might get mass produced and make a million dollar hits for somebody. But the concept is that everybody has a widget in their brain. Yeah. Everybody has something of value. And I think that the big thing to get over is the fact that, that we do, that everybody does. And maybe that person that does could be me and maybe I, I have a message worth telling and it's worth developing into a story. And then there's the actual ability to craft and shape and deliver that message. So what it, what is it that you do to help people develop and craft the wisdom? Well, I think you have to go right back. And, and I think you hit an important point here, Roland, is that, and again, especially with women, they we're really hard on ourselves. Uh, men will go ahead and do stuff. And women have got this, I, Christ, I don't know if it's encoded in our DNA now, but it really is, I'm not worthy. 
I can't mm. do this. Who would want to hear my story? So frequently, I, you have to go back to that level. So the first step really is mindset because you can't do anything until you have the mindset of I'm worthy. Yeah, I do have a story to tell and yes, it's worth telling. So the first bit is uh, I always do is get people to tell to tell their story and to tell it, to brain dump it and then organize it and look for the nuggets and the messages and then craft their the beginning of their story because your website is is based on your story. Uh, you know that too. And Lowell Ann knows that. So it, it the first bit is getting your your wisdom out in a way that you appreciate what you have to offer to the world. And that's number one. And then the second part is really helping them if they're not web savvy as to how to take that to the world. And, and uh, you know, a lot of folks say, oh, all this web stuff, I don't know where to start. And um, it, it's actually quite simple. You know, I think one of the things, <coughs> excuse me, that I really brought to this world was my ability, um, you know, when, when you're faced with an emergency, you know, like a kid that's been run over by a car and you go in and you see the kid, you go bang, 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 bang. This is the priority. Everything else is irrelevant and you take over. I mean, that that's when the anesthetist always takes over. And I've bought that ability to be able to say to women, you don't need that. You don't need that. You need this, this, this. And that's what we're going to do first. So I can cut the crap and very clearly say, um, just move down this path and we'll start building out your web presence. And so that's the second half of what I do. Story first, and then the process of taking the message out. And we all know the most effective way is video, but I kind of take that later because I know they don't actually want to do that. <laughs> so it's very interesting. What I sense in all of this is that you are some, somewhat of a psychologist, if you will, at the same time, because you're nurturing personalities of people who are not going willingly. They're resistant and they're doubtful and they have their negative thoughts and all that self-speak that says, well, I don't think I can do it. And and yet you're bridging the gap and then you're coaxing the people onward and you're encouraging them to express themselves. And one of the things that we focus on in, in this uh, series is get a camera, get a mic and express yourself. It's almost like Throw caution to the wind. Don't don't care about how good you are or what you have to say. Just express yourself. And if people get get over that one hump, they probably oh yeah, they make a little fool of themselves and they have some fun along the way and they're going to embarrass themselves occasionally. But along with that experience comes the knowledge and understanding of what video and all this is is all about. So. I think that that's what you're talking about with like the, the experience uh, teaches us and so forth. So let's, let's analyze this from a little different standpoint because I think that the, the concept of what you deliver is obvious and I'm there. I want to take your courses too, but I, with the name of your, what your program is wisdom to wealth mastery. Now, let's connect the dots. How does this equate to wealth? Well, I think it, this is where it connects back to mm. this whole issue of longevity, because we know that if you look at the stats of how much people have to, to, to survive through the years that they thought they were going to have, say from 60 to 85, and you now tack on the an extra kind of couple of decades, most people are, are going to be tight even to get to 85 and financing themselves and the whole concept of going above 100 well the money's just not going to be there and you know i think we're going to live a lot we're going to be a lot healthier and i know there's a lot of some amazing technology coming down the pipe that will allow us to live um much healthier lives much longer but you know at some point we're going to want to slow down and we're going to want to get off the the hamster wheel of life so how are you going to do that? How are you going to continue generating income? And you can do that on the web. I mean, if you, if you, and, and it's not easy, it takes time and it's competitive these days, but if you truly do need to generate income, there are ways of developing passive income. And we know the difference 
you know, between active and passive. But if you can either create courses or do affiliate marketing so that you create passive income for all the generations or all the time um, after after 65, if you think that's, you know, if, if you consider that the, the time you quit the regular work uh, environment, which I think actually is too early these days. But, you know, you can work towards generating both active and passive income on a long term basis way down the road. And that's where I take and it, and it comes from your wisdom. You've got the wisdom. Other people need your wisdom. They need your story. Brain dump it, organize it, take it out, create courses or get involved in affiliate marketing and generate the income you will need uh, later down, later in your life. And uh, begin. To, and I, I don't like the phrase set and forget because set and forget really doesn't exist anymore. Um, it, it, you've got to be involved in some way. But if you set it up now, you, you know, you don't have to be involved quite so much further down the road. And. I think it's just one of the easiest ways that you can uh, generate income and interest in yourself and your skills and your wisdom. Um, because frankly, there aren't enough Walmarts around for every one of us to go and be a Walmart greeter until we're 95. <laughs> that is a crack up. Um, oh my God, you said so much in the last uh, five minutes or so. And. Uh, <clears throat> Sorry. I wanted to uh, acknowledge that uh, I really appreciate that the people showed up that do. These are some regulars of ours, and uh, I, uh, I value their comments. So if you folks, if you have any comments for Sue, please fire away. If we don't get around to them during the live event, we'll double back and address them after the show and so forth. And um, basically, Sue, I can't believe that uh, you have accomplished what you do. And uh, I think it's really monumental from the standpoint of you, you haven't missed a step. You know, there's, there, there are so many people, not even at our age. When I say I group all of us in the same quadrant there, not even in our age that are looking like, well, I'm done. I, I, what am I going to do? I can't, I have no clue as to the future and their self value is so low that they're they, you know, they, they say, well, I was just a janitor for 30 years, or I just was a machinist for 30 years. What in the world do I know? And the thing that I know is if I picked that person aside and sat and had a conversation with them, I would find out so much stuff that I would be amazed at them. So, Holy smoke, I can't believe that you went through that because life has a way of applying things to us, right? And people underestimate their value and they do not assess what they are well enough to really think about what could I do, what could I give back? And so I think that this is a big subject for people because they'd like to be able to be on the board and say, this is what I could give, this is what I could package as a as a program and this is what it would fit into the 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 concept of uh passive income and this is what i could do it's all theory because they're having trouble plugging in the blanks so what do we do with the people who think that they are of no value <sighs> oh my just even talking about it makes my heart go <laughs> it's really tough because I, I've I've seen some who just can't get past that point, and that is really really tough. I don't know what's going to happen to them because to me it's it is the foundation of everything, and I, I I have bigger ideas too about you know changing things on a global level, and and you can't even do that and recruit people into that kind of world unless unless they get over this first I am not worthy thing. So the only, I mean, the only way you can do it is 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 point it out, work it out, and and, and you know get them to read self help books. You you encourage them and show them that they can. But it is it, it doesn't happen slowly, um, and so you know that can often be a big bit. But I I think just brain dumping a story is 
is really short circuits or speeds up. Now it's a short circuit, it speeds up the process too. And you know, you talk about the janitor and things. We there's this vaguely feeling right now that you take whatever you've done in your world and and transfer that. But I know you talk to someone like these guys, and they're actually an incredible hobbyist with, I don't know, flying model airplanes, right? Boom, there you are. That's that's their gift. That's their thing. So if you know if you can take a hobby that you're passionate about and turn that into a business, then that works too. It doesn't have, to, and in a way, that's sometimes that's easier mindset wise um, because you've already got the hobby and the club, and and you can build that out. And uh, there's always a way. I really believe there is always a way if you are willing to make the mind chef shift and and, and do it. This plays right into the concept that I've been speaking of since I started the Smarty Show. And that is that regardless if you want internet marketing or if you want to do express yourself on a show about something, whatever, do what you love because eventually you'll get paid for it. I believe this inherently and from my heart that if you do what you love, it doesn't matter what it is, you will eventually get paid for it. Even if it's even if it's ditch digging, I don't care what the subject is. You'll be the best ditch digger and the most well known ditch digger in an area, and you will make money doing that. But um, the concept of these hobbies and things being of value, I know a young man who started out, and he, all he wanted to do was fly drones and fly and do remote cars and the other stuff. So he's moving out of his teens into his early 20s and his family's going you got to get a job you got to complete school you got to you got to got to got to got to right and long story short this guy now runs a business flying drones around the stadiums like for the ducks hockey games and various things and they disseminate coupons to the public and he flies these things around and that's his business. Now, I mean, the success story of that just sticks in my mind because that's exactly right. You do what you love and eventually you can find a way to monetize. And uh, in the midst of this, Lowell Ann has a comment from somebody. Let's see what she's got. Well, uh, the comment is uh, from Mark, and he's just saying, well put, uh, Roland, self-doubt is tough. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to add something because I find that, yeah, you, uh, I mean, if you doubt that you've got something, one of the best ways is to connect with other people and, and, um, keep your curiosity going when you're when you're wit when you're connecting and and making new friends that's really going to raise your your self-worth as well wow i never thought that this would be <laughs> such a concept for this particular session but it is because i think that this is the challenge that so many people have and and this is why live streaming and video marketing although they say it's a huge wave right now this wave is going to be over the next several years and it's going to take some time to work in and develop and that's basically why we have jobs to do teaching live streaming teaching methodologies teaching the encouragement of how to get over yourself and get on camera and to try it out and uh so that's that's where our job comes from so thank you, Mark, for your comment. And um, I, I'm kind of like probably the exemplification of the least doubt, <laughs> not, not because I'm arrogant or egotistical, but because I just don't worry about it. You know, I, I figure if, I, if there's something that I don't know, I can learn it. If there's something I don't have, I can get it. And when you narrow it down, you usually need less than you think you do. It's so much of it is in your mind that, oh, gee, I, I have to achieve something. I have to get a certification. I have to get a degree. I need this equipment, blah, 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 blah. You can get started live streaming for almost free. 
And if you've got a smartphone, it's really almost free. And uh, so that's where the, all this starts. So we have about another uh, little less than 10 minutes. And indeed, this is a Sue Ferreira show. <laughs> so I wanted to turn it back over to you, Sue, and say, is there a message that you would like to give people about what you stand for, about what you do, and what you would, what banner you raise up right now as a live streaming and a video expert? What would you like to say to the people? Oh, that is a really good question, Roland. I think, I think it goes back to. I, I actually, I wrote, I did, I did a YouTube video last weekend on legacy, and I have been surprised the comments that I got from that legacy. A lot of people were quite moved by it and said, "I've never thought of my life in terms of a legacy." And you know, I'm not being morbid here, but the question I asked is, "What would you like the eulogist to say about you at your funeral?" Because I think if you really, if you write your own eulogy it gives you a direction for your life. And I, in a way, this is personal for me. My father was a lovely guy. Uh, he fought in the Second World War. He was a prisoner of war. When he came back from the war and I was born just after the war, he, I think he kind of just wanted a very quiet life. And he was a lovely man, but when he died, my mother had already died and he died with regrets and, um, he would often say, I wish I had, I wish I had done this. And I think that's actually really, um, it's probably more of my message than I realize, because I think it, you're given this opportunity, you're given this period of consciousness, you know, a whole lot of stuff happens, but we do have this remarkable short window of opportunity of consciousness. And I think it's really sad if you finish your life with regrets. So I, I, I just feel, examine your life, write your eulogy, see what you really want out of this life, and then, and then work towards it. And I think that gives you a pretty good roadmap. So that's what I would say is don't live your life with regrets. Think globally. That's a huge issue for me is um, I'm really concerned right now that we're at a period of building walls again. And this is a time of building walls when we don't need to build walls. We need to reach out across the planet. Uh, I've spent quite a bit of time in Africa. I see what they're doing there is quite remarkable. And it's incredible. You don't know that this video you're putting out today won't influence someone right around the world because it's there and it's available. So why not go for it? What do you got to lose? You've got this one life. You know what you might want to do. If you don't do it, you're going to die of regrets. So just just do it. I guess that's Nike, isn't it? They said that. They got it before me. Yeah, but I think that your, your incentive behind the just do it is much, much more profound than theirs. <laughs> uh, I will say, too, it brings to mind this concept of that we tend to build bricks with thoughts and experiences in our lives. And then people turn around and they either build wall walls to shut themselves in and protect themselves, or they can build platforms upon which to rise and stand. And I've always thought of, if I'm going to build bricks, well, I know I'm going to build bricks. You have experiences, but I'm going to build platforms because I want to get a little higher, see a little farther and have the open area of no walls. And that's, that was the, the concept that has always been, since I was like 15 years old, and I realized I'm going to build a platform. And that's hopefully what I'm doing now. And uh, your, your message is great. I think that the legacy of what we stand for is an important thing. But most people don't look at it, excuse me, most people don't look at it as, what is my legacy now? What have I built so far? Let me self-examine who and what I am and what is my line of message? What is my tagline of my life? And uh, that's a tough thing. But when you get around to it, you start analyzing exactly what your self-value is, your self-worth, worthiness, and then you can express that worthiness simply 
by expressing yourself. And that is your, the vehicle that you're creating and conducting for the masses today. So we are wrapping up the show now, and I appreciate, uh, Sue, your your participation with us today. Uh, Lowell Ann, do you have anything else to add? Well, I have I have a favorite expression that uh, fits in with what you where you uh, were both going, and that is making the decision as we progress along our journey. Is it about expansion or is it about contraction? And so, um, I mean, if 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 as we age, we decide that we're going to be uh, moving toward expansion, just look where it could take us. That's that's cool. And the, the thing is, I don't I don't see the universe contracting. We might have started with the Big Bang. It might be expanding from there. And maybe the theory is that there will be a contraction again. But in my life, I am expanding in joy. That's That might be the primary thing that I'm focused on is expanding in joy. Because if you start there, everything else will fall in place. And can I prove that? No, because too many people have proven me wrong by not doing the, the expanding in joy. But I think that you can't go wrong by expanding in joy. Do what you love, and you'll eventually get paid for it. And get a camera and a mic and express yourself. And with that, I think that we're going to be wrapping it up. Any last words from you, Sue? Well, I think just on the legacy thing, again, because um, it's worth thinking about, is you, you, you took it correctly that everything we do every day is working towards our legacy. So if we actually know what we want to people to say about us at our eulogy, we adjust the way we live every single day. And you know, you can use your eulogy as a marker. And I also agree with you about the, I love your analogy for the bricks um, and the walls. And there's an old Chinese proverb I often use, and that is when the winds of change blow, some people build walls and others build windmills. We're in a stage of incredible change right now. And that actually scares a lot of people. But you do have to make that decision again, just like Lowell Ann said, expansion or contraction, build a wall or build a windmill, you choose. And uh, if you don't make a choice, you're building a wall. Um, making a choice means you build a windmill. I love it. Walls and windmills. So we'll end the show with that. I thank Sue Ferreira for being with us today. Remember that there's uh, notes in the details below the video you can contact her or you can roll the video back and replay and all of her contact information is there and also i thank lowell ann for joining us today making this a little better show and excuse me for losing my voice right at the end of the show <laughs> but thank you very much and we're going to say goodbye from monday morning marketing smarties we'll be seeing thank you, you and goodbye <laughs>